we go. Okay. So again, bon, buongiorno, bonjour, good morning. Uh, my name is Marco. I work for ThinkPark, so it's the company behind BGFS. Um, I want to give you a small history behind that, but I want to dive you also into the news uh, about BGFS. Um, so um, it's wonderful to be here and a, a big honor. And uh, yeah, the weather, we, are, we need to work on the weather. Last year it was raining like hell. Uh, now it's getting better and um, actually we can have sun, though, so it's, it's, it's good. We are on the way. So uh, the history on, on BGFS, actually the, born, the idea has been born in Fra at Fraunhofer ITWM. These guys are located in uh, Kaiserslautern. Um, there was a, a, a guy coming from Frankfurt, he studied IT, his name is Sven Breuner. He wanted to be a PhD and he said, okay, you can be a PhD. Um, the, here is GPFS, here is Lustre, please write a file system. So that's actually what he did. He designed it, uh, he developed it, and the first version called Fraunhofer file system. And uh, it was very, very um, different. And the result actually was, uh, that, that we have a fully hardware agnostic PASIX file system um, which uh, really runs in the, in the user space above the arbitrated uh, Linux file systems. Uh, it's really designed for very, for any I.O. pattern, so it runs, uh, it runs um, uh, with, with full, uh, full uh, bandwidth in the infrastructure and relieve the full bandwidth of the hardware components. Um, it supports, um, where's my laser sword here? Ah, all right. Uh, it's uh, it scales. It's robust, and it's really ease of use. So installation of this PASIX file system is very easy. Um, uh, we are supporting any hardware, um, hardware CPU architecture, so Open Power x86, ARMs, AMD. So it's really uh, agnostic, and we are supporting all Linux distributions on on the market. Um, and you don't need Linux patches because we are running on top of the local file systems, with, which is exd, exd, exdf, exdf. XT4, XFS, ZFS, Hadoop, so you have the full flexibility for designing it. Uh, we are supporting RDMA, Rocky, TCP, TCP IP, and OmniPass, so it's also agnostic to the interconnect. And um, yeah, it's enabled for NFS, CIS, and for Hadoop as well. And it's really robust for any I.O. patterns. You can start small, you have a global mount point, uh, and you really can simply grow your infrastructure by capacity or performance performance-wise uh, on the level you might need, and that's non-disruptive. And that's pretty powerful. We have now roughly 250 customers around the globe, especially in our Asia, APEC, and US, uh, US markets are waking up on BGFS as well, because they see this, uh, these advantages, because you can start small and scale up the system really uh, to HPC infrastructures, very uh, yeah, non-disruptive, and that's, that's very powerful. Um, yeah, um, we are founded in 2014, so uh, Sven founded this company then here in 2014. I joined the company in 2015. Um, so we are the company behind BGFS. We are doing the support, the consultancy, uh, but we really do need partners as well um, who are designing the infrastructure and taking care about level one and level two. So we just sell actually a level three support subscription to the file system for the enterprise features. And yeah, it's, it's made in Germany. And um, we have no international approach, uh, so we, ha we, have, we see BGFS in very big deployments all over the world. And uh, we are, yeah, since we are hardware agnostic, we have also partnership with vendors, um, which I show you also um, in the next upcoming slides. Right, and we do have an award as well, and we didn't pay for it. Right, okay. So. Um, since it's hardware agnostic, uh, we see BGFS being used in um, HPC, AI, l deep learning, life science, oil and gas infrastructures. And um, yeah, uh, that's, that's the reason why, uh, why it really starts small and uh, you can fit it into different architectural concepts. 
Right, so um, it's um, well balanced from, for small files, small IOs and large file IOs. It really scales um, non-disruptive uh, seamlessly uh, by the capacity rights. It's ease of use, so a training on BGFS doesn't take longer than 10 hours if you understand your um, um, network infrastructure and HPC. Uh, in a 10-hour session, you are trained on BGFS and you can configure it for any IO infrastructures and patterns. And uh, it's really robust um, uh, designed because you enable, uh, you can enable your operations uh, on your infrastructure. Um, so if you download that and it's open source, uh, you have the full, you have access to the enterprise features, which are um, high availability functions, quota enforcements, Excel, uh, ACLs, storage pool management, and burst buffering functions. Um, and these uh, functionalities are disabled, so you need to enable them um, um, and test them. After 60 days, you should consider then a level C support subscription, but we have no control about it. So we really trust our customers. So if you like this file system, you can uh, subscribe for a level 3 support subscription, which, which actually gives you the uh, professional support. Uh, so there's a guaranteed next business day reaction. We are providing the uh, access to a partner portal where, there are, where you find in documentations and training and scripts uh, to have some automations around the file system. And there's also special repositories and, uh, uh, available in hard fixes, which are a little bit ahead of the public version. Um, yeah, and uh, if it's needed, uh, we are providing also some, some support uh, remotely via SSH. So the concept, um, let's dive a little bit into the architectural concept. So compared to other file systems, it's a user space driven approach, uh, sitting in a user space with very lightweighted service demons. These service demons are, um, are, are following. So we have a client service, which is really a, a native Linux, a Linux model to mount the file system. Then you do have a management service, which is really registering all components of the infrastructure so it's not engaged into the data stream. And the main magic behind BGFS is the metadata service. So it's maintaining the striping information of the files. But the interesting part is here that it is not involved into the data access for the file and open close process. And that brings us into the position to relieve the full bandwidth of each spindle, to find the, the full bandwidth of a hardware controller, and delivering via speed to the applications. So the metadata performance is outstanding fast. And that scales uh, also in, in, in the directions from the metadata service part, but from the storage part as well. So it's, it scales in, in, different, in different dimensions, metadata-wise and storage-wise as well. So in the storage services, are distributed, uh, um, distributing the file content. We have also a graphical interface. And the interesting part is now, regarding the flexibility, you can have dedicated metadata server components, or you can run these metadata services and the storage services already on, on an SSD. So with a 500 gigabyte SSD, you can handle already 150 million files. And that's how you're configuring the infrastructure, and that's how you actually start very small, and then you scale up the system step by step on the level you might need uh, for your particular projects. Um, yeah, we're providing here a graphical interface uh, to manage all administrative uh, tasks and monitor the system. You can set thresholds, email notifications, all those kind of parts. And uh, there's also an Ubuntu Windows style installation, which makes it very easy that uh, yeah, non-geeks can install this file system in an infrastructure as well. Right, okay, um, let's dive into the functionalities, the enterprise features, so high availability. There are three parts to provide high availability around the file system. One uh, functionality called uh, body mirroring that allows you actually to mirror f on file level, di uh, director, uh, director level or target level. So you're setting up a synchronous mirror between two nodes and these nodes can mirror then the metadata or storage part. Um, it's free configurable and uh, you can have cascaded mir uh, mirrors uh, to, this, to this infrastructure, um, and uh, this can be in different uh, racks, in different fire zones, but also it works for longer distances as well. Yeah, and if you add a pacemaker or chorusingo stoners, you have a kind of automatic failover infrastructure. So we are providing this DRDB scripts uh, to add here additional, um, yeah, 
a high availability and resiliency of the, info, of, of the system. Of course, we are recommending RAID 6. And um, yeah, RAID 6 has, uh, is a little tiny erasure coding uh, to, this, to the system, so that's, that's the part. What we see also very often that people are combining BGFS with ZFS to having snapshots, uh, encryption, software rate, especially you know, uh, with NVMe devices. People are using that. I've seen also already uh, first um, appliances being, being delivered by hardware vendors uh, to the market where they're combining BGFS with, with ZFS on top of 100 spindles. And the interesting part is that actually with two infinite cards in the back plane, you can have roughly between um, 15 and 20 gigabytes a second on a, in one enclosure already. So that's quite uh, interesting uh, what, what the markets are building around BGFS and uh, that uh, appliances coming out. And I will mention this also, who is doing this in the next upcoming slide. So, and you can do smart things with it as well because, I mean, you can drain uh, infrastructures because it's a synchronous mirror um, and uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic solution for, for administrators as well. So, high availability, CFS, uh, body mirroring, and Corosync are the combinations for high availability plus, of course, a RAID 6 infrastructure. Okay, people came also to us and said, "Hey guys, we need, we need, we want to have, we want to manage pools. We have, uh, we have flash pools and HD drives as well. Um, can you help us with this?" But uh, we found out um, actually, if you are introducing our policy engine, that wouldn't interfere the performance. So we said we do it a little bit different. So we can actually an administrator or power user can set up a quota and run his critical project in, in a flash environment. As soon as this project is accomplished, he just needs to relieve a little command, and BGFS is moving and fully transparent the data to the next level of tier, which can be a SAS pool or SATA pool. And that process can be automated via Slurm, so you just need to impl implement uh, an epilogue prologue script to the infrastructure, so you can really uh, orchestrate your infrastructure on the level you might need for your particular critical projects, and increase the efficiency. We are providing then a, a event modification uh, database uh, um, where you actually could hook up then other policy engines if necessary. But we wanted to decouple this because if we have to measure the files and the heat of the files and making decisions with the via the file system, we would decrease the performance and that's the reason why we introduced this functionality. So powerful and um, yeah, very efficient. The next one, the next part is um, BGFS on demand. Since we are talking about lightweighted service demons sitting in the user space above the arbitrated file system, it allows you also to create a file system instance on the flight and run this file system instance on available SSDs and NVMEs. And that's very, uh, very interesting for very nasty I.O. patterns, which are really um, yeah, bringing down the performance and degrade the performance of your infrastructure. So you can really uh, light up this file system instance for critical or nasty I.O. patterns and run this, this on your available SSD nodes on the, on the client side and increase the efficiency, what you have already in place. And um, again, this is also a, 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 just a very simple command here, uh, how to start um, um, this, this file system, beyond start, minus n, which node files it should be integrated, the storage directories, how to mount that thing, and then you have a, a, a burst buffer file system running on the SSDs on the client side. So it's very, very powerful, of course, in HPC infrastructures, but also for, for AI infrastructures as well, where you have them maybe 14 million IOs, 4K block, random access, and writing it in a single directory, that's really degrading the performance of your infrastructure and that's that's very powerful and in combination now uh, to integrate that via an epilog prologue script um, you can manage and juggle this uh, in your infrastructure uh, and uh, yeah, in increase the efficiency of your client nodes powerful stuff of course, we have uh, an administration a monitoring facility where you yeah, see the entire healthiness of your system. There's a green button and a red button if something occurs. Then you can dive down and have statistics. But uh, I mean, there are way better, way, way better frameworks already in infrastructure. So we are providing also an open API. So BGFS can be integrated in cluster management solutions like uh, class, uh, like Brus uh, I like these guys very much because 
this is a graphical interface where you see your entire infrastructure. You can do updates by mouse clicks. So if I would have the money, I would buy these guys immediately. But uh, maybe they say the same fast as well. And uh, the combination of this cluster management solution is they are using, they certified our packages in their, in, into their infrastructure since version 8. And uh, yeah, you can move and juggle data between different pools, push data into, into the cloud, and you see then also the healthiness of your infrastructure, and that's a good combination. But that works with any other cluster management solutions as well, and can be integrated in, in existing frameworks if you want to do this. Right, so uh, BGFS and, and, um, and beyond is a very powerful combination. And that's actually how we got very popular because you start with BGFS as a converged system usually in a, in a project where you certify your project. Um, you, you have done some hard work uh, from Dell, Supermicro, or whatever makes sense to your infrastructure, or you have a good contract with these guys. So you start very small and scale up the system really non-disruptive as soon as this computation uh, provide, uh, gives you more, more uh, uh, produce a lot of data, so you scale up the system, um, and um, you can scale up then this system then into, a, an, into an enterprise infrastructure, adding components because we are just running in the user space with services. You can switch them on and off, you can do non-disruptive upgrades to the infrastructure, and, and, and yeah, scale up the system really um, into um, uh, um, an entire storage pool with different tiers. Um, and and um, if you really need then the burst buffering part, uh, you can add then uh, this and, and run this on the client side, which I think it's it's wonderful because usually if you want to have, buy a, an um, expensive uh, burst buffer solution, um, uh, you have you have already your clients in place. You you can really use that what you have already in place and use their, their available SSDs and NVMEs. So this combination is super. All right, uh, some use cases, and that's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing here as well. Um, we are partnering now, uh, uh, we are lining up now with, with um, uh, Accelero. Sven is working ex at Accelero, so these guys are uh, doing um, yeah, a, a, a software-defined SAN, low latency fa over fabric NVMe solution. Um, they combine BGFS on, on and beyond on, on their system. Uh, so we, we had already a, a, a common project together um, where uh, we've been running this to, to together and we had also some, some benchmarks which I want to show you. And uh, maybe you can have a, a, a short word about that. Um, what are the results being there and what was uh, actually um, yeah, the implementation? Could you say something there? Because that was really, really fast. <laughs> Okay, uh, for uh, I'll try to be very quick and not to steal too yeah. much of your time. Thank you. <laughs> for those of you who don't know NVMesh at all, uh, very generally speaking, like you said, it's a software-defined XAN specially optimized for NVMe because for NVMe, right, this ultra-low latency, we need to rethink parts of the stack to not waste much of the performance. So on the one hand, NVMesh um, enables remote access to NVMe drives at the at about the same performance that you would get for local drives. We call this technology RDDA for remote direct drive access by bypassing the server-side CPU. And on the other hand, you can create flexible volumes on top of multiple NVMe drives inside a single server or even scale out across multiple servers um, with what you could call a distributed RAID, right? So uh, RAID 0 for simple striping or RAID 1 for redundancy or even erasure coding. And that, of course, very nicely goes together um, with BGF so uh, one reference architecture here as an example uh, that we show is what we call Stinger, uh, very nice and elegant uh, dense box, uh, four nodes into U, uh, 24 NVMe drives. The balance here is very important because when you're dealing with NVMe drives and try to export the performance over a network, you have to uh, take care of the PCI lanes, how you balance with the networks and so on, right? Because a couple of NVMe drives can already fully exhaust your 100 gig link. Uh, so this little box has uh, 800 gig links. And then we show what happens when we combine this with BGFS and we see that uh, from such a small system already, we get a ridiculously cool uh, performance of already uh, 1 million random 4K uh, IOPS redundant mirrored, right? Uh, the same uh, can also be done, of course, with uh, erasure coding. 
and we get already 600,000 file creates uh, per second, again, uh, redundant already across multiple servers. And if we switch to the next slide, yes. Um, of course, that's uh, useful in uh, many cases, right? But one particular case, of course, where you need the high IOPS because you have the many small or medium-sized files for the training is AI, right? So uh, one good example uh, to team up uh, NVMesh and uh, BGFS is uh, by putting them behind your DGX systems, right? And make them really happy uh, for they are no longer starving on uh, I.O. now. Uh, the other use case is, of course, beyond, for instance, or adding them as a storage pool, right? Um, for beyond, the advantage now is that you don't need uh, to have an NVMe in each of the compute nodes anymore, right? You can have a fewer number of NVMe's top of the rack or only in every tenth node and make them available uh, to the compute nodes where you need them on demand, right? Because you still have the uh, performance as if they would be local. Um, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Just let me do this again. I, uh, I want to fly at this, this speed. That's very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> In this case, they were zero because we just wanted to measure the uh, create performance. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sven, for this wonderful use case. The next one is Alfred Wegener Institute in Germany. These guys are doing ocean research. Um, it's uh, they are doing tsunami prediction and all this kind of uh, stuff. Um, that's a combination where the people are using BGFS uh, and beyond. Uh, that has been established by the Macware guys over there. So Peter uh, implemented this um, on this on this uh, infrastructure. We have here petabyte scratch uh, for providing BG this, this which which actually providing eight gigabytes a second. Um, we have here 360 nodes, and that's an omnipass uh, interconnect. And the performance of uh, on this infrastructure is roughly about uh, 168 gigabytes a second. So it's really the full bandwidth of Omnipass on this infrastructure, and that uh, and uh, Peter actually uh, automated that process via Slurm uh, um, with an epilogue prolog script. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's an impressive infrastructure. We actually we helped this customer to save a lot of cost because he didn't uh, have to invest into a, 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 um, a, a burst buffer infrastructure, and he could use already his ex existing SSD infrastructure with Omnipass. So I mean, the, the financial impact was also very important for this customer. Uh, next one is um, that's, a, that's in Asia. It's a, a EIST, these guys are doing um, also artificial uh, projects. They're using Beyond Only, that has been implemented by uh, by Fujitsu and, and Pacific Tech. That's a 1.6 petabyte infrastructures, uh, and and these guys landed actually um, um, on um, I, um, on the 500 top list num on rank number seven. Is this infrastructure? So it's quite it's quite interesting to see that these guys use Singularity and Univa Grid Engine to automate that process and light up these containers on these NVMe's um, um, and and relieving the full bandwidth. But I'm, I'm uncertainly I don't have any IO any IOR benchmarks currently. But it's ranked number seven. I think there is there is there are they are somewhere, but I don't have them. The next one is uh, the biggest NVMe installation we have uh, that was also uh, implemented via Dell and uh, Pacific Tech. That's a two petabyte environment, uh, and we are relieving pretty soon on ISC what this, what this infrastructure can do. It's also an artificial intelligence project in Australia. Um, they have four metadata servers, uh, 32 uh, storage nodes. It's really two petabyte NVMe infrastructure, so very powerful. And um, yeah, there's a link where you can see uh, the, the first results, um, which I, I mean, I share this slide deck anyhow, and uh, that will be available. Yeah, um, mainly in, art, uh, in artificial intelligence projects, we see that people are combining Singularity, Slurm, uh, and Univer Grid Engine. And um, yeah, Hussein, this is uh, to, your, uh, to your question. This is the Epilogue Prologue script. 
Uh, so you can copy paste that from the slide deck if you want, or I send you an email. So um, that's the integration of uh, in, uh, into the into the batch system, which really automate the process for managing the storage pools, but also lighting up then the the file system instance on on the on the client side. Yeah, um, budget information. I mean, uh, budget is always an important part. <laughs> so um, we are also here very flexible uh, and providing here a fair business model. So um, the pricing model based, based, is really based on the number of nodes. So uh, uh, MDS server is uh, 1,200 euros, um, and, um, and uh, uh, OS server is 1,700 euros per node per year, which is usually being sold as a three-year bundle or five-year bundle combined with the hardware integration. Uh, we are providing, of course, our training to BGFS. Again, it's the 10-hour session. Then you're a certified BGFS specialist, and then you get a special B. And um, it's 1,200 euros investment, and then you're ready to go. And uh, we are fully half, uh, we, we are also fully independent on the capacity. And if it, this, this model scales up, I mean, uh, it scales as well. So if you have a very large infrastructure with 30, 40 storage nodes, we can negotiate a flat fee for the infrastructure to have a, fa a, a, ba a fair pricing model here as well. This is this is the academic price. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Okay. If you run, if you want to prove it, you just download it. But uh, engage us early. Talk to us. We are happy to help you during the benchmark. We have the benchmark tools for your infrastructure, for the network, and so on. That you have actually a fine, that you have some kind of I/O profiles for your capacity. Um, we help you to find out now which underlying file system might be the best. There is a, a white paper available which shows you actually uh, how you get out the, 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 the maximum speed of your, of your metadata infrastructure. So just engage us early. We help you with this. Uh, we are fully hardware agnostic uh, during the proof of concept. Then you have all data uh, available for your, for your boss and can show him a good price, enormous performance. It scales linear. It's ease of use. And that's actually what it should be. And I, I mean, I can really say um, um, it's, it's a, a solution what I think it will be in the future as well because it's hardware agnostic. It is not capacity uh, driven. So um, uh, it really is a file system for a long-term relationship. Of course, we, we need to learn from your infrastructures as well. Engage us, uh, talk to us, uh, and um, yeah. We are, we are happy to assist you. And that's how to get it. That's is important as well. So I mean, uh, of course, our, our platinum partner, Macware, um, doing businesses with us all over Europe, um, uh, E4, uh, Dalco, and um, Duit are, are the local partners here in, 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 this, uh, in this region. And um, yeah, we do have a lot of technology partners now. So Accelero is a partner. We are partnering with Dell. So we are just negotiating now worldwide with, with Dell. Um, so we can go to Dell as well and, and ask them, hey guys, um, we want to have BGFS in our infrastructure. But Inspur, NetApp, HP, E8, QCT, Fujitsu, and Lenovo are partners with us where we are, we are combining our solutions with their hardware setup. Uh, it runs in the cloud. Um, we do have uh, lots of yeah, technology partners here like uh, Neuriot, uh, Sharp Reflections, and Bright Computing, which are cooperating with us. Yeah, that brings me actually to the final end. So um, these are um, the point of concepts. If you want to schedule a training, there's a training link, uh, a portal where there are several people lo looking at. Or if you want to know a price, it's info at thinkpark.com. And if you have technical related problems or questions, just drop it uh, to the support team or drop, drop it to me. That's my job because I bring customers, vendors, and partners together and building a solution. Um, thank you for your time. If you have questions, I will be available during the coffee break, or you can light up a question right now. Um, so thank you for your attention, and uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you here. Thank you.